So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make sure I had this adjustments tab open. I think this is the default layout, so properties and adjustment are sort of together. Um, the properties panel is not as, um, you know, infinitely useful in Photoshop as it is in Illustrator. Well, that may change with different versions, so keep an eye out. So I'm going to open the adjustments tab, and these are all non-destructive adjustment layers. So if you hover over the little icons, it'll tell you the name of the thing. So like brightness and contrast probably looks familiar. Just, you know, if anyone who uses Instagram and has edited photos on Instagram, they have brightness and contrast. Um, they have like a hue thing in there. In Photoshop, it's hue and saturation. So a lot of the terms probably look familiar. And you may have dabbled in some of the stuff um, just, you know, again, just using Instagram. So the first thing I want to do is, um, take a look at my layers. So it's simple right now. I only have one layer. It's my background layer. You see, it always comes with this little lock. So if you just click on the lock, it'll become layer zero and it will be unlocked. So I'm going to choose... Um, a levels adjustment layer and that's the one that has like little histogram graph on it the second one so I have this my only layer selected and if I choose my layers adjustment you'll see that I get a new layer that has different icons on it so this first one is the icon that quickly tells me which adjustment it is so I know at a glance that's my levels because it has the same little icon that it has in the adjustments panel. And then there's a white rectangle. So the white rectangle is something called a mask. And we will get into masking for selection purposes soonish. Um, but that just tells you the area of the image right below it that, it's that it is applying to. So if it's white, it's applying to that part of the image. So if this whole thing is white, it's applying to the entire picture. So we will we'll try a couple of these throughout. Levels is a good one. Like I feel like this part of the picture is a little bit dark. So if I um hold on, clicked on the wrong thing. Okay. So the properties panel now becomes really useful because it should show this this graph um, called a histogram that kind of plots out the amount of pixels at certain values. So these spikes here tell me that there's a lot of really dark pixels and up here it tells me that there are not many very light pixels at all. So if you're looking to, to adjust, um, this is usually gives you a better result than like brightness and contrast because that can kind of tend to flatten out some things you wouldn't necessarily want it to flatten out. So layer the, or sorry, levels just gives you a little bit better control. So if I grab this middle slider and I drag it to the left, it's lightening up the midtone values. And now I can see more, I'll try to like overemphasize it so you can see it on screen. If I drag it to the right, they get darker. If I drag it to the left, they get lighter. So I'm just going to pull that a little bit to the side. Mine says 1.23 underneath it. And now I can see more, like I can see more of these steps and more of the reflections, but the lighter part of the image has not been affected at all. All right, so let's try another one of these, but I don't want to throw out my work. So I'm just going to turn off my levels layer by just clicking the eyeball icon. So this is also a useful thing to see sort of like a before and after and judge the adjustments you've just made. Just turn it on and off, toggle it on and off with that eye icon. 
So I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to select my layer zero again. Because remember, Photoshop is all about selecting. If you can select things in here, you can do almost anything. <laughs> so remember to select our like normal pixel image first. And then I'm going to go back to adjustments and let's do selective color. So it's the next to last one and it kind of looks like an envelope. So selective color is good for either bringing out or toning down uh, a certain like family of colors in an image. So this image has a lot of blue in it. So if I change under colors, it defaults to reds. If I change that to blues, now I am targeting all the blues in this document. So if I pull cyan out of there, and so I pull down or to the left on that slider, it loses that blue cast. It almost starts to go like magenta, like slightly purpley. So I could also pull some magenta out of there. And then again, if I hide and show this layer, I can see the differences. So if you're looking to affect the entire image and not just certain um, color types like we just did, um, the best way to go about it is to choose neutrals. And then like if I wanted these yellowy details to show up more, I could set it to neutrals saying, look at all the colors that are kind of like vaguely in a neutral range. There are also a lot of those, there are a lot of grays basically is what that says. There's a lot of grays in this image too. So I'm going to say, look at all these neutral colors and bring out the yellow. And you can see if you go too far, the whole image takes on a tint. So if, if I want to make this photo realistic, no, this is not a good thing, but think about your project. You might want to use color, especially if you're using like an emotional place, you might want to use color to, to set a mood. Um, so if I also, if I pull magenta up, okay, maybe not that far, got a little overexcited. Um, so if I remove cyan and I'm lagging a little bit and I pull up on magenta and yellow, you can get this like red cast that is like, oh no, what's happening to this place? So selective color is a quick and non-destructive way to play with that overall color cast, but also to have a lot of control over it. So I didn't just, you know, you could go to the hue thing and pull that around, but you won't have the control you do um, because you can't target these individual base color channels and either enhance them or like, you know, desaturate them or whatever. Um, so, you know, use selective color when you want to have this sort of effect and you'll be able to get a lot of extra control with this rather than using the hue one. All right, so I'm going to turn that one off. The other thing I often get asked about is black and white and there is a black and white adjustment layer which does basically exactly what you think it does. So I'm going to select the layer first because you have to always select first in Photoshop. If you want to do anything, you have to select something first. So I'm going to select my layer and then click that black and white adjustment layer. And you can see it makes like a default black and white. But again, we have a lot of control over it. So these are sort of showing, um, I think the best way to think of this is actually it's showing like the density um, for each of the previous color channels just converted to black and white. Um, so if I pull the blue slider to the right and lighten it up, 
I get a little bit more definition in here. Um, if you make too many, like this can really bring out the grain in an image. Because again, this was not like a super high quality photo. Um, but again, this might be a look that you want. Like it's starting to look like vintage or, you know, like old timey or like it was, you know, printed in a magazine or a newspaper. It's starting to get that look. It's not as a direct relationship as the selective color. Like we chose a color, we edited that color channel, it clearly showed up. Um, for this one, you have to know your image pretty well. So again, like thinking about those yellows. So the sky is kind of yellowish. There's some sun in here. So if I go to that yellow, it, you can see a big difference anywhere there's that yellow color in the original color image. It can still like notice and target those places in this black and white filter. So I could brighten those parts of the image just by doing this rather than, you know, complicated, um, so, you know, complicated selections and things like that. So a uh, channel like Magenta, I can move this around all I want and very little is happening. Like there's a tiny bit over here, but that's because in the original image, there's not really much magenta. It's very kind of blue and yellow, um, you know, maybe a bit of green in there in this uh, glass building. So just remember that all of this color channel stuff, either in the black and white filter or the selective color, it's all relative to what your image is. There's going to be, there's never going to be a right answer to like, just open any image and do this and this and it's going to be great. Never. Never let anyone tell you that. It's not going to happen. Um, so it's that, like, the other part of skill in Photoshop is being able to look at your original image and think about which colors are in there, which color channels are in there, you know, where is it, like, a little too dense, that kind of thing. You can have multiple adjustment layers. So I'm going to turn on the levels one. And let's turn on um, selective color. And you can drag and drop and reorder your layers just like you can in all the other Adobe programs. But notice when you change the order of those adjustment layers, things do change. So it's a matter of have you adjusted the levels first and then the selective color? Or did you make those selective color choices first and then adjust the levels on top of that. So ordering does absolutely matter. 